The most common HTTP request is a GET. GET is how browsers and other web clients ask for documents or other content from a web server. So let's look at the uh, format of a GET request. Uh, we're going to do a simple GET request over here. So I'm going to use my favorite tool, the Chrome Developer Console, and I'm going to use it to request this simple page from our example server. So let's look up here, start up uh, here in the location bar. You see here's my URL and the components, this is the protocol, I'm actually requesting this over HTTPS. The host name is experiment.internetclass.org and the path is examples slash simple.html. That's the web document that I'm asking for. Um, I've got my network tab open over here in my Chrome developer console and I'm going to use that to, I'm going to reload the page and we're going to see what happens. So go over here reload the page, I've retrieved the page and I can see over here in my developer console that that required a single get request. This is a very simple page, it's only one document. Um, let's look a little bit more at, at what that get request looks like. So here's um, what came back, it was the page I asked for. Um, and here's the, you know, here's more information that Chrome will show you about the get request itself. So the request method was get. Here's the URL uh, that I uh, requested, which is good. That matches what I would expect. Um, the remote address is 128.205.43.186. That's the IP address of experiment.interclass.org. And then 443, because rather than requesting this over port 80, I'm actually talking to the secure web server that's running at port 443 the port 443. Um, okay, so, and then here's information about the response. So, and there's some interesting information here. Um, the content came back as gzipped. So this was actually compressed by the server. So this page was compressed on the server, transmitted over the wire, and then decompressed by the client. This is a way to save some bytes on the wire. So HTML and other uh, markup formats are pretty compressible. So by compressing them on the server, I make them smaller. There's less data that has to be transmitted. Um, there's uh, more information about the content type. Um, there's some, this is sort of security related information. Um, it looks like I, the uh, uh, web server is trying to set a cookie. There's a status code here. So this is status 200. This is also up here. And Chrome has put a little green bar next to that or a green ball indicating that this is good. Status code 200 is the status sent back from a GET request when the request was fulfilled successfully. So the server is telling me not only did I get you a document, but everything went A-OK. -okay. Um, and then down here we can look at the actual request headers that were sent. So this is information about the response that came back from the server, but let's look at information about the request that was sent. Um, method again is get, and here's the path. So down here you can see that Chrome is, is separating the path that was um, requested from this host name. So the host name was experiment.internetclass.org. The path is uh, slash example slash simple.html. I, HTML, I requested this using HTTPS, um, and there's other information that was, was sent along to requests. So this is kind of the, the format of the request and the request headers. Um, okay, great. So let's look at a, a different type of GET request. This is, uh, this is pretty uh, common, but let's see. I can also look up uh, get.html. Um, because when I make a GET request, I can also include some extra information in the request that the server can use. Uh, this is an example, so I'm going to uh, click on some buttons over here. Uh, originally when I go here, I can see this is a pretty standard uh, GET request for slash example slash get.html. But now, as I click on these choices, you'll see, oops, that's not good. Okay, uh, well let's pretend that this worked. Um, and what we can see over here is that the GET request was parameterized by this uh, additional parameter. And in fact, I can fix this so it works. Let me do this. Examples, um, there we go, okay. Um, so that's, that's correct. So now what happened here is that I clicked on a button and then what's interesting here is that this part is the original path, example slash get.html, but there's this interesting uh, extra bit of information here. So there's a separator, which is this question mark, and then there's a string of parameters. And actually, I can set multiple parameters in the get request, and you probably noticed this before. Um, 
by separating them with ampersands. So um, another parameter equals b. That parameter is actually ignored by this particular request. But you can see that the server knows something about that information because the server sent me back a page that indicates that it knows the choice that I made. So if I go up here and I make a different choice, let's say I choose B, um, it'll send me back a page that says I chose B. So this is an example of how the get request can be used to pass information to the server. And that's done by uh, making a standard get request, but in the URL itself, encoding some additional information. So I have a question mark, and then I have a series of key value pairs that are separated by ampersands. This is common, you probably see this a lot online, and it's a common way for the client to send a little bit of extra information to the server along with the get request.